you can now feel what the aircraft is doing in Microsoft Flight Simulator, just like the real deal. In this video, we're gonna be checking out the next level HF8 haptic gaming pad, and it not only works for PC, but it also works for console flyers as well, and basically enhances your experience for your home simulator, a cockpit experience. So we're gonna be checking it out in this video. The HF8 Haptic a Gaming Pad is made by Next Level Racing. These are the guys that have made some awesome home racing rigs and flight simulator rigs from entry level all the way up to motion simulators. They are based in Australia and have been making these products for many, many years and really know their stuff when it comes to affordable simulator cockpits. That being said, I got to review their Boeing cockpit a while back and a month ago they sent me out their HF8 product which I've been using for a little while now and got to check that out. All the comments on these videos are all my own opinion and they are from my own experiences using their products. The HF8 is a haptic gaming feedback pad. Basically it has eight vibrating pads that are strategically placed around the gaming seat from the upper back to the lower back, the buttocks and the upper legs. These are vibrating pads to pick up all sorts of movements from the sim and transfer it in to this uh, seat pad. You can really feel the aircraft when it comes to a G-force, engine thrust, flaps, air brakes, gears and ground effects and more. All these pads are fully customized, which we will go through a little later in the video. And in my opinion, the HF8 does fill the gap and enhances the flight simulation experience when it comes to home flight simulator cockpit flying and also being strapped to the real aircraft and feeling the vibrations and g-forces and that sort of thing. And this really brings the gap closer with all the feature comforts of flight simming at home. I'll give you a quick walkthrough on the HF8 Next Level um, Haptic Pad. I'm just using this on a, on a mobile phone, so the quality is probably not too good. But it's probably the best way to do it, considering it's a pad, they're pretty hard to film. So as you can see, it just sits in the chair. So this is my Next Level Flight Simulator cockpit. I'll leave a, a button up the top there or a link in the description if you wanted to check out that video. As you can see, it just sits in this particular cockpit. I will show you um, how it looks in just a normal desk chair because we want to show that as well. It's got some straps in the back here. I've just thrown these over to demonstrate. When I've been using it, I haven't been using the straps at all. I've just sat it in there. That way I can pull it out at any time if I um, want to or if I'm working away and I don't need to actually use it. And also it's got some straps underneath here that you can wrap around it and some lower ones. But if you wanted to make it a bit of a permanent setup, you can uh, strap those in. The other thing is it's actually quite thick. So you probably noticed here, it's actually very, very, very thick and quite comfortable as well. There's eight pads in here. So you've got two pads just up here, one on each side, got some pads. I think where's the motors on these ones? See how it's quite thick, they're hard to find, but they're just there. And then you've got them in the lower part here on each side and down in the front. The HF8 itself can take a fair bit of weight, up to 150 kilos and also 330 pounds. I did find over long periods of time though that the pads down the bottom of my legs were sort of wearing on me a little bit. So that's only on, on long flights. That depends on who's actually using it. I'm a pretty big guy, I'm about six foot three, tended to sort of be a bit wary on the legs, but again, then again, that will be different to everybody but in my case that's the way it sort of was one thing to take in consideration when using the hf8 is when you're using it on a flight sim copy or just a normal chair you'll be sitting that little bit forward and that little bit higher so you'll need to adjust because obviously the pad can be is quite thick in parts of it so um, you'll need to make some adjustments uh, I'll actually take it off now and just throw it on a normal gaming chair so you can see how nice and easy it, it fits. It's really compatible for it. I've put it in another cockpit as well as this white sim cockpit and also my everyday gaming chair and it fits quite easy on both. Let's take the straps off here. It's actually quite light so it's easy to move around. I've obviously got some of the cords here. So just move this around, pop it here. And this is it just on a everyday sort of gaming chair. The HF8 has this controller that comes out of the side here. And you can use this controller to do a couple of things. One is to turn on and off 
Um, it has a LED here, which obviously I don't have it plugged in at the moment, but that goes red all the way through to amber to green. And that's just basically adjusting the sensitivity. You can adjust the sensitivity through the, um, the software that comes with it. This actually comes on a long cable. It's actually quite long. Oops, let me pick it up here. And it will go into USB. So it plugs also into the power as well. So there's a power connector that connects into it and then it plugs into USB. So if you're using this on PC, you can plug it into USB or you can plug it into your audio jack. So it comes with this 3.5 mil audio jack. So if you're using this on console such as Xbox or even PlayStation, I believe it actually even works with a Nintendo Switch. You can plug it into say the controller for the Xbox. And by doing that, it will work on Xbox and it will receive and it will work. But the only thing you can't do with Xbox when you're plugging in using audio is actually use the software that comes with it and customize the eight, the eight different um, motors that come with it. The other thing is that you can use this for watching movies and all that sort of thing. So it's just not for gaming. Um, it's just not for flight simming. It works on a, a bunch of different things. The cable is quite long, so you need to do some cable management. That being said, it's great because it uh, suits all different solutions and home cockpits. So Let's take a look at the software. The software is native uh, to the HFA Next Level Racing pad. You can use a third party software that you can pay for um, to be able to do the same thing as this, and it will suit to any type of flight simulator or racing thing. Um, but that being said, I only decided to use that the native one that comes with it and as you can see they've already got some profiles set up for a very well-known uh, racing sims and flight simulators such as Assetto Corsa, many of the uh, Formula 1 versions, uh, Horizon Forza, Cars or Project Cars 2, um, Dirt Rally 2 and also X-Plane and Microsoft Flight Simulator. Oh, and I forgot iRacing as well. So we're going to click on a Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, one thing you can actually do, as you can see, the um, HF8 seat pads aren't lighting up green because I don't have it plugged in at the moment, but you can uh, basically click on them and test it to see what it feels like and make sure that everything's working. Up the top for Microsoft Flight Simulator, you've got an import and export section. This is where you can import different profiles um, that you've got situated so I personally have this set up for different categories such as an airliner category or a GA category but also you can go further deeper than that and you can set up profiles for individual uh, aircraft so I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check out this particular profile this is my basic GA profile and it might save you some time um, getting up and running as you can see this is me I fly aircraft in real life yes that's me and I've tried to mimic this basic profile to something that I get the same type of feeling when I'm flying at these small planes in real life. That being said, there's about eight different sections in here that which your profiles are set up with. You've got engines, you've got flaps, you've got G-force, you've got speed brake, you've got landing gear, stalls, and ground effects. Uh, these buttons here on the right-hand side, you can switch them on and switch them off. So as you can see with this profile here, I have stalls switched off because I'm not planning on stalling the aircraft unless I was practicing doing stalls. So I've got that switched off and if I was going to practice doing stalls, I would switch it on. And moving over to the left hand side, these little sliders here is where you can change your intensity of what you want the vibrations uh, to be at. So you can uh, move the slider up to the right, that'll put the intensity all the way up and move the slider down to the left and obviously that'll change the intensity. Remember when we showed you and did the walk around, uh, you've got that in uh, intensity of a knob on, on the actual control uh, box, you can uh, use that too. This is basically here, setting and forgetting, and that, that one there will actually control the sensitivity for all of them. Now, this being said, you can go into each individual one and um, select which pads you want to work with, uh, say, engines and flaps. I'll switch on here. Let's take a look at engines. I've got the uh, front two pads, uh, the front left and the front right pads actually switched off. And I'm just using uh, the, um, the rear left, the rear right, and the lower left, the lower right, and the higher right, and the higher left seats just for my engines. When it comes to flaps, I'm doing the complete opposite. I've actually got the uh, front pads turned on, the buttocks pads turned on, and the lower back turn, turn on, and then I've got the higher ones actually switched off. And I've actually played around with most of these and turned which one's on and turned them off to really sort of suit what it feels like flying in real life. 
Now, one thing to mention how this works is if you um, load up this uh, software and then jump into the copy, it won't work. You won't feel the vibrations of working at all. What you actually do, you need you need to set up your sim and set up your flight and jump in the copy and then load this up and that will work. That is one big thing. So if you notice that it's not working, you need to close it all down. You need to end task uh, the actual program and the profiles and then load them up and it will be all up and running. We are now in the simulator. Now, one thing I'm just gonna put up the start there, it's very hard to showcase and show how this works considering I'm sitting on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an engine start, do a taxi, and then also we're gonna do a takeoff and, and raise the gear. And I'm gonna tell you what I'm feeling to how that's compared in that real life to give you some sort of experience. Cause other than that, I don't know how to do it, but we're gonna give it a shot anyway. And now we've got the aircraft started. What I'm actually feeling with the engine start is I've got the uh, the pads um, on my lower back and also my buttocks. They're the ones that I'm feeling the most and I'm feeling like a little vibration sort of mimicking that the murmuring of, of the engine while we're, we're idling. Um, if I actually increase the RPM to say, uh, say 2000 or 1500, I can feel the intense. And it feels like a, a GA engine um, you can feel the roughness in, in, in the back, which is super cool. Time for a, a taxi. So we're gonna release the parking brake. And now what I'm feeling is I'm feeling some ground effect as well. So even when I've come off the, uh, the throttle there, you, you can feel the vibrations go down. So that it's super cool that you can feel what the aircraft's doing. Um, and you're able to mimic different bumps and stuff in the, in, the, in the runway. You can feel it coming through the actual back. So we're going to taxi down here. I'm going to actually turn that off because we've got some people flying in the simulator today. And what we're going to do is we're going to put one stage of flap down. And I could feel the flap. I could feel the flap go down, which was super cool. And what you can do with the flaps, in particular the air brake. The air brake's one of my favorite things that the um, haptic sort of mimics, is you can feel the air brakes coming in and you can feel the whole plane rumbling and it's super cool. But at the moment, I'm just feeling pretty much the rumble of, of the actual engine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off and we're gonna pop the, um, the gear up and I'll sort of talk you through what I'm actually feeling at the same time. There we go. You can feel the movement in the seat already just towards that back, that bottom part, and the lower back. You can feel the rumble getting larger. There we go, it's really, you can really feel the effects now, and in the, in the bottom of the part of the seat as I'm feeling, oh, there we go. And now I'm actually feeling the ground effects uh, from the actual runway, so. Now at 60 knots, we're gonna rotate here. Just doing this nice and slow. There we go. And now we're feeling less rumble because we're off the ground. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop up the gear. The gear's going up and I can feel it rumbling around. There's obviously someone flying around here as well. And I can feel the gear and the vibration's actually changing when the gear is going up. Now, the other thing we need to do, we're at 300 feet, so we can put our flaps up now. So I'm gonna do that. And I can feel the flap motors. It feels like you can feel the flap motors go up and bring the flaps up, which is uh, super cool. So we're gonna drop the gears down now, and then I'm gonna put another notch of flaps as we're on our base call. And now I can really feel the vibration of everything coming in um, with the gear down. Have a quick look, we'll start making our turn. About 600 for a turn, even though this is a little bit of an extended base turn. But I can really feel the vibration in the, in the back and in the buttocks of those two haptic motors. Oh, and that was a really bad lineup. <laughs> a really bad lineup. But anyways, we get the idea. Let's just see if we can chase it up here. And when flying airliners are here, you can you can see like the 7.3, you can feel the one gear going down and then the other gear and it sort of comes through in the, in the haptic pad, which is pretty cool. We're a bit low, so like I said, excuse my landing in advance. Let's uh, control our altitude with our 
Frosty. There we go. Come in for a landing on this nice, calm, clear day. Pulling all the vibrations. There we go. Blaring, holding off, holding off, holding off, holding off. There we go. And now with the ground effects comes in, which I've got those set to the pads at the lower part of the legs, and you can really sort of feel it all come in at the same time. In summary, the Next Level HF8 is an excellent option for your first haptic, a gaming pad, and a step towards a motion cockpit flying in my opinion. One of my favourite features is the ability to customise the 8 different motors and have the 8 motors strategically placed to provide the best immersion and enhancements in your flight simulation. The thing is, it's very versatile and it's very easy to set up and I would think it would fit in many different types of chair options. The only negative I have would be, in my experience, I found that the motors that were situated at the front of my legs were a bit wearing on long sessions, but that's very subjective due to my body type and size. Overall, the Next Level HF8 Haptic Gaming Pad is an excellent addition to my daily sim experience, and I will be keep using these ongoing. The retail price is about 399 AUD, around 270 US, or about 220 pounds. I'll leave a link in the description of where you can check out in your part of the world where you can pick one up from. And also I'll leave a link in the description of where you can pick up the basic profile that I mentioned in this video. If you'd like to see more hardware reviews like this one, these are aimed at enhancing your simulation experience at home. Please hit that subscribe button for more of these videos. And I will leave you with another video here as we checked out the next level Boeing cockpit, which I reviewed not so long ago.